Hello friends, is device form factor something you consider when buying a new device? Or is it something that you've never really thought about? I totally get it, when you're buying a new computer there's a lot of things to consider, like specs, price, battery life, what colour you'd like it in, but it's actually not just a laptop or a desktop anymore. I'm sure a lot of us still remember early days of laptops, where they were still way more convenient than having a desktop because you could take them places with you, but they were still quite large and bulky and you definitely had to take the charger with you or it would only last 20 minutes off the charge. So by the time you had to take that big heavy device and the charger, it kind of was less convenient. So 9 times out of 10, you didn't actually take it with you unless you really really needed it. Yeah, that was totally my experience when I first started uni 10 years ago, but so much has changed in technology over the last decade. But for me, the game changing device in my journey to becoming more of a digital native was absolutely the Surface Pro 2. I got this device while I was at university, and instead of having to have a physical notebook for each and every one of my classes, I started up a OneNote on this. I was able to type notes or handwrite them on the screen depending on what I was vibing most that day and since getting this device I have never looked back. But like I say, so much in technology has changed over the last 10 years. Even the Microsoft Surface family has grown and evolved to have a different form factor to suit each and every user. Let's go on a bit of a journey together through all of the different devices and how that form factor might be able to suit you for everything you want your new device to be able to do. I want us to start off where the Surface journey first began, with the Surface Pro, a 2-in-1 detachable device. I have always loved the versatility of this product. I'm able to use it as a laptop with a keyboard connected, or I can take that keyboard off completely or just fold it around to the back to use it as a tablet. I can even write on the screen using the Surface Slim Pen 2, so I can have that more traditional notebook pen on paper kind of feeling. There are also some great accessories like the Surface Dock 2 or the Microsoft USB-C Travel Hub that I can connect up to an external monitor to give this device that more full desktop kind of feeling. Now that I'm out and about more, I really appreciate the versatility and portability of this device. Like I say, I can have my full desk set up when I'm at home, or I can really easily pop it into my bag, it has all the ports I need to present at events, or I can even just have it on my lap taking handwritten notes while at a meeting in a cafe. I think where you're going to be using your device the most is a really important thing to consider and it might not be something that you actually really think about. If you're someone who travels a lot, goes out and about for work or maybe you're even a student, then the Surface Pro devices might be a really awesome option for you, especially if you're someone who likes to handwrite notes, draw diagrams or even just doodle. This device is such a great all-rounder. There are a few different spec configurations so you can get the power that you need to suit you. But if this doesn't quite meet your budget expectations or you're looking for something even smaller and more portable, you might also want to check out the Surface Go 3. If a traditional laptop form factor is more for you, then we also have a few different options in this space too. They have some fun new modern features that you may not have had in your previous device. While we're talking about ultra portable devices, let's start off with the Surface Laptop Go 2. It's a 12.4 inch device so it is ultra portable and a really great device for students. You can also really easily lift the lid of the laptop using just one finger. For me this has always been my favourite part of the design of the Surface laptops. You easily lift that lid with just one finger and you can't see any like visible screws or speaker grates or moving hinges, it's just the keyboard and that beautiful pixel sense touch screen display. So technology really fades into the background so it's easier for you to focus on what it is you need to get done. The Surface Laptop Go 2 has Windows Hello, which in this case is powered by fingerprint recognition. On all other Surface devices, Windows Hello is powered by facial recognition. I absolutely love this experience because it makes signing into my device really really quick and easy, and it saves me time each and every time I get set up for the day. The traditional laptop form factor might be a great option for you if you're going to be using your device mostly at a desk, at a table, or sometimes on your lap. All Surface laptop devices have a Pixel Sense touchscreen display, meaning you can navigate your device using touch, or of course using keyboard and mouse as well. Not only do we have the Surface Laptop Go, the 12.4 inch device, but there's also a Surface Laptop range of 13.5 inch devices or a 15 inch device. So there's lots of different spec configurations available and you can find a device that meets not only your power but your budget as well. 
If typing is the main way that you like to take notes, write emails or documents, then a traditional laptop form factor will absolutely be the best option for you. But if you want to make the most out of your Surface Pen or Surface Slim Pen 2, then I definitely recommend trying out devices like the Surface Go 3, the Surface Pro or the Surface Laptop Studio, which I promise I'm going to get to soon. These are the devices that are designed for the best inking experience. While you can use your Surface Pen on the screen of your Surface Laptop, it's just a little bit awkward to do because of the device's form factor and how we're just naturally programmed to write best on a flat surface. I can easily sign a document on my laptop, but I probably wouldn't use it to write a full page of notes. That might be just me, but it's something I find a little bit awkward. And this of course brings me to the last device and form factor that I want to talk about in this video. Of course I'm talking about the Surface Laptop Studio. This is my current daily device and I absolutely love that this device can transform to all of the different ways that I need to use it throughout my day. As you can see, I make a lot of videos, so power is something that's really important to me in a device. I need a computer that can comfortably run large apps like Premiere Pro. But I don't just work at my desk 100% of the time, so having like a full beast mode desktop just isn't going to cut it for everything that I need to do. I like to travel a lot, and I'm also out and about at a lot of events doing presenting and things like that, so I love using this device in stage mode in meetings or when I'm talking to smaller groups to be able to get that presentation feel, that huddle around the campfire kind of vibe. It's also really great using it in this mode for while I'm gaming when I'm away from home. And last, but certainly not least, you can fold this device right down into studio mode. I love taking handwritten notes and being able to draw diagrams to explain my convoluted ideas. So I really need a device that can do all three of these modes and I've absolutely found it in the Surface Laptop Studio. So I really encourage you next time you're buying a new computer to not only think about what you're going to be using it for to help you land on the kind of specs that you might need, but where you're going to be using it as well to help you pick the right form factor for you so your device will suit everything you need to do wherever you are throughout your day. Pardon my pun, but I have barely scraped the surface on everything that you can do with these devices. So I highly recommend that you check out our individual spotlight videos to find out more about each of these surface devices. I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you on the next one.